Hello viewers, today I will be teaching you probability and um, what I intend to teach today is the introduction to probability and I'm going to give like um, one or two examples. So this is going to be a series on probability. So this is the first um, episode on the series. So what do we mean by the word probability? Like we know when we talk about the, uh, the measure of uncertainty, okay, we talk about um, probability. And um, one of the things you need to know is that for any event, okay, you calculating the probability of any event to happen, okay, the formula is that um, you need the number of expected outcome. So that is what you expect to see over the number, the total number of what possible outcome. So the number of possible outcome is what I call the what? The sample space. Okay, so in short, you can just say the number of, of expected outcome over what? The number of the sample space. So this is a pure definition of what? Of probability. And take note of something that for every values of probability that you have, it must be within the range of zero less or equals to the probability of the event less or equals to one. What does this mean? It means that the probability of an event can be greater or equals to zero. It can be zero or more than zero. And also, the probability of the same event can be less or equals to 1. It shows that you can't have a negative value for probability. And at the same time, you can't have what? Uh, values that is greater than 1 for probability. So you can have a negative and you can't have values greater than 1 for any probability. So that, such that whenever you are working on probability and your value is within the range of 0 to 1, then what you are doing is still intact. But provided it is outside this range, then you know that there's a mistake somewhere. Okay, so this is the next thing you need to know on probability. Also, on probability, the probability that an event will happen, okay, like I said, can be zero or one. Now, the probability that an event will not happen, you can put E to C, or let me call it the probability that the event will not happen. Take for instance, you want to calculate the probability that Arsenal will not win Champions League. Okay? Some can say zero. No. <laughs> the probability that Arsenal will win Champions League can be one. Okay? Because Arsenal have a better score now. So the probability that events will not happen is what? One minus the probability that the event will surely happen. Okay? If the probability that Arsenal playing Manchester United, the probability that Arsenal is going to win, if it is going to be 1 over 3. So the probability that Arsenal is not going to win is going to be what? 1 minus 1 over 3. Okay? So this is a definition for you to know that probability that events will not happen is the same thing as 1 minus probability that the event will surely happen. Okay? So now, um, I'm going to give you an example to illustrate what I've been saying. Okay, this is just going to be a simple example. Well, in our subsequent episode, then I'm going to, I might move to more complex um, example. Now, let's look at this first example. Let me call this example one. So, in a single throw of a coin, find the probability of obtaining edge. So, the first thing we need to do for this is to get your sample space. So when you throw a coin, what is the possible outcome you can have? You can either have head or you can have what? Tail. So it's possible you have head or you have what? Tail. So these are the two possible outcomes you can have. Right? Now what's the question? We want to calculate the probability of obtaining head. 
Don't forget from the definition of the probability means number of expected outcome over number of sample space. So my sample space is H and T. So we have a total of two, right? Now, what is my um, expected outcome? The number of your expected outcome is what? H. So how many values do we have? Only one. Right? So for you to find the probability of the event, which is going to be what? Number of expected outcome over number of what? Sample space. So the number of expected outcome of obtaining A is only one. Right? The number of sample space is what? A T, which is what? Two. So we have 1 over 2. When you convert this to decimal, you're going to have what? 0 0.5. Let's look at a little bit more um, complex example to illustrate what I've been teaching. Example number 2. Control of 2 coins. Find the probability of obtaining 2 eggs. That's the first question. And the second question, at least one tail. So now for the first one, let's do this. Like I said, what is your sample space? Sample space means your all your possible outcomes. Okay, when you flip um, two coins at the same time, what are the possible outcomes you can have? The first outcome that is possible is that the first coin can be egg, and the second coin can be egg, egg, egg. It's possible the first is head while the second is tail. The, th the third possible is that it's possible the first is tail, the second is head. And lastly, it's possible you have tail, tail. Okay? So, looking at this, or let me just call this the sample space, yeah. The sample space. Another way of getting your sample space is by you doing head tail from your head you can have head tail head tail we call this a tree diagram so using a tree diagram you can have head head which is this head tail which is this tail head this is it tail tail this is it okay so now the cardinality of your sample space how many values do we have as a sample space? One, two, three, four. Four. So what's the question? We want to find the probability of obtaining two eggs. That is, the event itself that we want to work on, two eggs. So let's see, where can we find two eggs? This is only where we can find two eggs. Egg, egg. Okay, so what is the expected outcome, the number, the cardinality of this event, how many do we have? It is only one value. So now the probability of the event is now going to be what? Number of expected outcome over what? Number of what? Sample space. So the number of expected outcome is what? One over number of sample space is what? So that's the method used. For the second question, at least one tail. You see, the word at least in probability means that minimum, minimum, minimum. If it is at most, maximum. Take note of this. So, for the second part, at least one tail, that is, Let's get the events. So what are the expected outcome? Minimum of one tail. So it's possible we have a tail. It's possible tail appear only once. Or we have tail head. Or you can have tail appearing twice. You know, I said minimum of only one tail. So that is, it can be only one tail. Or it can be what? Two tails. 
So the number of expected outcome here is going to be what? One, two, three. So with this, my probability is going to be what? Number of expected outcome, which is three. What is my sample space, which is what? Four. So that's it. So in my subsequent episode, I'm going to explain more on coins. When we have three coins, how do you determine your sample space? And also the situation that when you have a die, then we move to mutually exclusive, mutually exhaustive events. Thank you very much for watching my videos. See you next time. Bye.